In the shadowy annals of time, the ghastly specter known as Krampus emerges from the murky depths of pre-Christian Alpine folklore. A malevolent force, draped in the tattered shrouds of ancient traditions, its eerie presence has cast a sinister pallor over the forlorn landscapes since time immemorial. Unearthed from the cryptic recesses of history, the vile celebrations entwining Krampus with human fate writhe in the macabre dance of the 6th or 7th century AD. A bone-chilling void cloaks this maleficent entity, its origins obscured in the cryptic mists of antiquity, with tendrils of dread extending back through the corridors of time. Though the grotesque tendrils of Krampus' influence silently slithered through the annals, a shroud of silence veiled this abomination until the curtain of the 16th century lifted, revealing the unspeakable horrors that lay dormant in the shadows of bygone eras. The dreaded Krampus is a harrowing entity that emerges from the shadows during the Advent season, casting a sinister pall over the unsuspecting children who dare to misbehave. As the malevolent counterpart to Saint Nicholas, the duo descends upon the realm of mortals on the night of December 5th, a date etched in the annals of fear. Saint Nicholas, the benevolent bestower of gifts, seeks out the virtuous souls among the innocent. Oranges, dried fruit, walnuts, and the sweet allure of chocolate are bestowed upon those deemed worthy of benevolence. However, for the wretched souls who have succumbed to the darkness of disobedience, a far more sinister fate awaits. Krampus, the horned harbinger of doom, clad in shadows and wielding birch rods as instruments of dread, emerges to mete out punishment. The air is thick with trepidation as he descends upon the miscreants, ensuring that their deeds do not go unanswered. In the symphony of the night, the cries of the punished mingle with the haunting echoes of hooves and the sinister rustle of birch rods, crafting a nightmarish tableau where the line between punishment and malevolence blurs. The Advent season becomes a realm of fear, where the wicked tremble beneath the looming specter of Krampus, a living nightmare that enforces the dark equilibrium of morality in the most horrific of fashions. Shrouded in the enigmatic mists of time, the genesis of the monstrous figure known as Krampus remains an abyss of uncertainty. The whispers of folklore beckon, and the speculations of scholars and anthropologists echo through the corridors of ambiguity, suggesting that the origins of this malevolent entity may stretch into the shadowy realms that precede Christianity itself. In a grotesque theater of tradition, where darkness intertwines with reverie, the unsettling figure of Krampus takes center stage. Traditional parades and the unnerving spectacle of the Krampuslauf, a malevolent procession, unfold like nightmarish pageantry. Here, young men, cloaked in the macabre guise of Krampus, unleash a symphony of terror upon the unsuspecting audience. Their ghastly antics, a grotesque dance of shadows, seek to instill fear and dread in the hearts of those who dare to witness the unholy performance. This unhinged display of horror is not confined to the recesses of ancient lore but manifests itself annually in the alpine towns that bear witness to the nightmarish tradition. The Krampuslauf, an unsettling ritual, etches its indelible mark on the collective psyche of the communities, ensuring that the malevolent spirit of Krampus continues to haunt the darkened alleyways and cobbled streets. As if the nightmare could be contained no longer, Krampus emerges from the depths of folklore to infiltrate the very fabric of seasonal greetings. Holiday cards take on a sinister tone as Krampus graces Krampusgarten, turning festive wishes into chilling reminders of the lurking terror. In this unsettling fusion of tradition and modernity, the malevolent spirit of Krampus refuses to be relegated to the shadows, continuing to weave its unsettling narrative into the tapestry of holiday lore. In the grim aftermath of the tumultuous 1932 election in Austria, a chilling decree echoed through the corridors of power. The oppressive Dolphus regime, operating under the ominous banner of the clerical fascist Fatherland Front, Vaterlandish Front, and the Christian Social Party, cast its sinister shadow over the land, decreeing a dark edict that would extinguish the age-old Krampus tradition. Under the weight of authoritarian disdain, the malevolent figure of Krampus was banished, its eerie presence deemed unacceptable in the eyes of the regime. The once vibrant celebrations, synonymous with dread and reverie, were stifled by the iron fist of political dogma, leaving the haunting echoes of Krampus silenced in the oppressive stillness that descended upon the land. In the austere 1950s, the government, gripped by an insidious fear, unleashed pamphlets bearing the ominous title, Krampus is an evil man, 
The propaganda machine churned with tales of psychological peril, warning that encounters with Krampus could inflict irreparable damage upon the fragile minds of children. The malevolent shadow of Krampus, once banished, lingered as a specter in the collective psyche, haunting the very fabric of childhood innocence. As the century drew to a close, a resilient spirit emerged from the ashes of suppression. A resurgence, both defiant and jubilant, gripped the hearts of the people. The forbidden Krampus celebrations, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, returned with a vengeance, refusing to be confined by the shackles of political oppression. The revival of the Krampus tradition extended its spectral tendrils beyond the borders of Austria, infiltrating the Bavarian landscape. Here, a local artistic tradition flourished, giving birth to hand-carved wooden masks that brought the malevolent visage of Krampus back into the limelight. Yet, with the resurgence of tradition came reports of a disquieting nature. In 2019, whispers spread of masked Krampuses descending into chaos in Austrian towns. Tales of drunken revelry and disorderly conduct painted a disconcerting portrait of the unhinged celebrations, as the revived Krampus tradition danced on the razor's edge between eerie nostalgia and a descent into chaotic mayhem. The malevolent spirit, once suppressed, now roamed freely, leaving a trail of unsettling stories in its wake. Across the myriad variations that haunt the darkest recesses of folklore, a sinister consistency emerges etching into the collective imagination the harrowing image of Krampus. Hirsute and foreboding, Krampus materializes in shades of darkness, his fur, a tangled mane of brooding brown or abyssal black, cloaking his monstrous form. The twisted amalgamation of human and beast, he strides upon cloven hooves, a diabolical creature that defies the boundaries between worlds. Atop his hellish crown, the twisted horns of a goat curl menacingly, a grotesque testament to the unholy fusion of the infernal and the corporeal. But it is the ghastly countenance that strikes terror into the hearts of those who dare to witness Krampus in the gloom. His elongated tongue, a nightmarish appendage, dangles grotesquely, a sinister harbinger of impending dread. Fangs, sharp and malevolent, jut from his maw, ready to rend the innocence from the unsuspecting. In the grasp of Krampus, chains writhe and clank, an unsettling symphony that echoes the binding of the devil by the Christian church. With theatrical flourish, he thrashes these chains, a macabre performance that resonates with the weight of infernal symbolism. Accompanying the chains, bells of various sizes jingle ominously, the disconcerting sound heralding the approach of this demonic specter. From the darker annals of pagan origins emerges the root, a bundle of birch branches clutched in the clawed hand of Krampus. With this ominous implement, he occasionally swats at children, a cruel reminder of the sinister origins that predate the Christian veil. The root, perhaps rooted in pre-Christian pagan initiation rites, becomes an instrument of torment in the malevolent hands of Krampus. Yet, more ominous still, is the accursed burden strapped to his back, a sack or a basket, a macabre vessel with a nefarious purpose. Within its confines, malevolent intentions fester, it is said to be the vessel used to cart off wicked children, their fates sealed in the abyss. Drowning, consumption, or a one-way journey to the depths of hell, the sinister possibilities loom large. In the macabre dance of folklore, Krampus, like a monstrous companion to Saint Nicholas, echoes the grim fate that awaits those who stray into the shadows of malevolence. The dread-filled sack, a spectral echo of judgment, casts its ominous shadow over the realm of Krampus a chilling reminder that darkness is not without consequence in the ghastly folklore of this unholy figure. As the wintry winds whisper tales of darkness across parts of Europe, a foreboding specter emerges on the eve of the Feast of St. Nicholas. The night of December 5th, known as Krampus Night or Krampusnacht, becomes a macabre dance of malevolence, shrouded in the icy grip of anticipation. As the saint himself, adorned in the eastern rite vestments of a bishop, makes his divine presence known, a golden ceremonial staff in hand, the dichotomy between light and darkness becomes starkly apparent. Unlike the benevolent figure celebrated in North American traditions, this Eastern European incarnation of Saint Nicholas is a selective judge of character. He concerns himself solely with the virtuous, the pure of heart, leaving the malevolent task of dealing with the nefarious to his nightmarish companion, Krampus. Thank you for your support.